Hey, good morning and or good afternoon, depending on when you're watching this. Um, here's the answers to uh, your final exam practice. I'm just going to go over these real quickly. Uh, I sent you the answers already, but this is how you do it. Give the terminal point coordinate um, for pi over 3. So at pi over 3, you're at 60 degrees. And that coordinate would, the x value would be the short leg, the y value is the long leg. So 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. That's what that's looking for. Now we're ready for the pi value. If x value is the short leg here, the y value is the long leg, and x is negative and y is positive, that puts us up here at a 60 degree reference like the last one. So this is 120 degrees. The pi value for that would be 2 pi over 3. The exact value for cosine of 11 pi over 3. So if you remember, 11 pi over 3, you have to make that into a mixed number if it's um, a large improper fraction. So 3 goes into 11 three times with a remainder of 2. So you're at 3 pi, so all the way around is 2 pi then to 3 pi, and you have 2 thirds pi left, which is what you have in number 2, so you got to go 100, another 120 degrees, which puts you right here. And the exact value for cosine, cosine is the x value. The x value is the short leg here, so it is 1 half. Okay, so now we have to graph the cosine. So graphing this, if you remember, all I need from you is the main points and what it looks like. So it starts up here and goes down and back up. So the four points we need are typically pi over 2. The, the valley is going to be at pi. It crosses at 3 pi over 2 and ends at 2 pi. And this is typically 1 down to negative 1. So that's your generic uh, graphing of a cosine, and I'd want to see all of those. Uh, graph 2 sine 2 thirds x minus pi over 6. Okay. So we need to get uh, the 2 thirds to be 1. So we're going to factor out a 2 thirds from both of these. So this is going to be 2 sine of 2 thirds. And then if you factor that out of the... Uh, Parentheses, you get 1x, and so now we have a fraction inside of a fraction here, so the top times the reciprocal of the bottom, and we can reduce diagonally, and that's pi over 4. So this would be x minus pi over 4. Okay, so your 2 at the front here is your amplitude. That's how big above and below uh, the x-axis you're going to go, and the 2 thirds is your k, so this is 2 pi over k is how we find our period, how, how long it is. Uh, in number 4, it was 0 to 2 pi. This one's going to be 2 pi over 2 thirds. Again, fraction inside of a fraction, 2 pi times 3 halves. The 2's cancel, and we get 3 pi. So this is going to be stretched out to 3 pi, and it's going to shift to the right by pi over 4. So we start at pi over 4. And let me change colors here. Um, let's see it a little bit better here. Whoops. Okay, so we're going to start at actually pi over 4. Amplitude is plus and minus 2. So we're going to start here, and it's going to go down and back up. Now the question is, where are all these points? And you remember, we have to start at pi over 4 and add... Um, the period, well, not the full period, the full period divided by 4. So we're adding 3 pi over 4 to each of these. So pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4 is pi. That's this first spot right here. That's pi. Add another pi over 4 to that. And so you have 4 pi over 4, which is 1 pi, plus another 3 pi over 4. That gives us 7 pi over 4. So this one is 7 pi over 4. That's the valley. And then the next point, take 7 pi over 4 plus the 3 pi over 4, and you get 10 pi over 4. 
which is 5 halves pi. And then add uh, 10 pi over 4 to another 3 pi over 4, and you get 13 pi over 4 at the very end. Okay, now what is the radian measure of uh, 54 degrees and number 6? So radian, to get radian, we want radian, we're going to multiply by pi over 180. If we wanted degrees, we'd put the 180 on top. So we take 54 times pi on your calculator, um, scientific calculator at the moment. So 54 times pi, oops, um, equals 169.646 divided by 180. So the radian measurement is 0.9425. Remember the radian measurement is how far around the circle we're going. All the way to 180 is 3.14. Um, 90 degrees is 1.57, which is half of, the, half of pi. So 54 degrees is about right there. So this distance is going to be about 0.9425. Anyway, this is how you do it. Now, what is the degree of pi over 10? So we take pi over 10, and we're since we want degrees, we're going to multiply by 180 on top over pi. And the pi's cancel out, and we get 180 over 10, which is just 18 degrees. Okay? Find the coterminal angle between 0 and 360 uh, with negative 100. So we go negative, which is down, there's negative 90 plus another 10 degrees. So what would be a coterminal angle um, that would get us um, back to zero? So if we go this direction, what would that be? Well, that'd be 260 degrees. So that answer is 260. Find the area of the sector of a circle with an 80 degree angle and a radius of, of eight. So it's one half r squared times theta. And remember, theta has to be in terms of radians. So we're going to take the degree, the 80, times, since we went radians, pi goes on top. So we have, that's going to be our theta. Our radius is 8. So 1 half, 8 squared, times whatever 80 pi over 180 is. So 80 times pi divided by 180 gives me 1.3963. Okay, take that answer times 64 and divide it by 2. And our technical answer at this point is going to be 44.68. doesn't say what to round to. You can round to the tenths if you want. I'm not going to be looking at that that closely. If you told me the answer was 48 degrees, I would say that's wrong. It has to be much closer than that. All right, so find angle A. Angle A, um, in order to know what that degree is, we got to use SOHCAHTOA. So I can use sine, cosine, or tangent because I have all three pieces of the triangle. So the sine of theta is the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. That's three-fifths. So how do I get the degree? By taking the arc sine on your calculator of 3 divided by 5. So arc sine... 3 divided by 5. Make sure you're in degree mode because you're looking for degrees. 36.9. 36.9 degrees is that answer. What's the reference angle for 310 degrees? Reference is how fast can we get to the x-axis. So we'll go all the way around to 270 plus another 40. And here's 310. That means there is 50 degrees left to get back to the x-axis. So that is your 50 degree uh, reference. All right, let's go to the next page. Okay, here we are, uh, number 12, the arc cosine of negative one half. And of course, you could put that in your calculator, but you should know what that is. So if uh, you're looking for the, oops, the x value, uh, let's see here, we want the x value, and this is the short leg and it's negative. So negative one half goes over here. Let's use a different color here. Negative one half, short leg. And so if that's a short leg, that means y is the long leg here. So where are we? 
in terms of degrees. Well, that would be a 60 degree reference, so you're at 120 degrees or 2 pi over 3. Okay? All right, use the law of sines to complete and solve the triangle. All right, so this is going to take uh, a little time here. So we can get this angle because 180 degrees minus the other two gives us that angle. So when it says solve, you got to do everything. So 180 minus 46 minus 20 is going to give me 114 degrees. Okay, great. Now we need to get uh, little a and little b. So to get little a, the law of sines says the sine of 46 is to little a as, now we need to use uh, two pieces of information that we know. All right, so we know these two pieces, they go together. So that would be the sine of 114 is to 65. And now we just use our calculator and do a cross multiplication. So 65 times the sine of 46 and then you would take A times the sine of 114 and then divide by the sine of 114. So it's cross multiplication. You should know what that is. So A is equal to 51. And we'll just leave them as whole numbers at the moment. All right, now to get B, we'll change colors here. To get B, we'll take the sine of B, capital B, is to little b. Big B is 20. Let me erase that. All right, so the sine of 20 degrees is to little b, as we'll use again 114 degrees to 65. And again, cross multiply. 65 times the sine of 20 is 22.23, and divide off the sine of 114. So little b is 24.3, or 24 is b fine. All right, so that would be solving it, those three answers. Next, uh, number 14, use the law of cosines to completely solve. Okay, so we, uh, if we want little c, uh, we'll eventually have to get a and angle b. So if we want c, then we use the law of cosines formula on your formula sheet. And that means we're going to take a squared plus b squared minus 2 times a times b times the cosine of C, or cosine of 120 degrees. The cosine at 120 degrees is negative 1 half. So now I can plug this into the calculator. I'm going to work this backwards. So negative 0.5, which is cosine of 120, times 10, times 18, times 2. All right, so that's negative 180. So I have 18 squared plus 10 squared minus 180. I say negative 180, sorry. Uh, and that's the key to these things if you're doing these on a, on a calculator um, that doesn't have a lot of function, okay? So what is that then? 18 squared is 324. You're going to add 100 to it because that's 10 squared. So we have 424 um, plus 180. And that is... Uh, 604. Okay, and then you take the square root of that. Okay, so the square root of 604 is going to be 24.6. So we'll we'll say that that's 24.6 because you have to take the square root. Make sure this is squared here, I guess. Take the square root. 24.6 is C. All right, now we can use um, the law of sines to do the other angles at this point. Um, if you want to do that, as long as I see the law of cosines used once, I'll be okay with you using other things too. If you want to, law of sines seems to always be easier. So, and all we need to do now is get one more angle and then subtract it from 180. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the law of sines. So the sine of angle B is to little b as the sine is to 120 over 24.6. And cross multiply again and we'll get angle B. So 10 times the sine of 120 is going to be 8.66 divided by 24.6.
and you get 0 0.3520. Remember, you have to take the arc sine at that point if you want the degrees. So the arc sine of the answer is going to give me 20.6 degrees. Okay, and then subtract 120 and 20.6 from 180. And you get 39.4 for angle A. So not a lot of room on there, but you don't have to do a lot. Just show me that you got it written down. Show me that you worked it out. Uh, kind of like what I did there, and you should be okay. Um, next, write cosine uh, times the tangent in terms of sine and cosine. So these are the, mani uh, the manipulation problems. So typically, you write everything in terms of sine and cosine. Tangent is the sine over the cosine, and these are all in terms of T. Uh, and notice that uh, cosine cancels out, and we are left with the sine of T as the answer. Pretty simple one. Um, usually give you decent ones on the on the test like this that it's not going to be, you know, four or five lines long or even worse. So simplify this one. And this is a little more a little uh, more difficult. So again, try to put everything in terms of cosine and sine. So let me change um, the uh, ink here to something you can see. So you have a cosine. And secant is goes with cosine, so that's 1 over cosine. And then cotangent is cosine over sine. And so at this point, cosine cancels out, and you're left with just uh, 1 over 1, which is 1 on the top. And you have cosine over sine, so now you have a fraction inside of a fraction. So the top times the reciprocal of the bottom is going to be sine over cosine, which is tangent of x, and that's the answer. Number 17, use addition and subtraction formulas to find the exact value of cosine of 195. All right, so first of all, let's come up with some degrees to get 195. So just quickly, uh, 60 and 135. So 60 plus 135 is going to give me 195, and both of these are on your unit circle. That's the point. If you do not use the unit circle values, you get no credit for this stuff. All right, so now we need to use the cosine formula, addition formula. Okay, so you have cosine of 60 times the cosine of 135. And since it's a plus and this is cosine, we're going to subtract the sine of 60 times the sine of 135. And let's look at what the values are on the unit circle. Okay, so the cosine, the x value at 60 degrees is 1 half. The x value at 135 degrees um, is going to be square root of 2 over 2. And I want to see these values on the test. The y value at 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. And uh, the y value at 135 is square root of 2 over 2. All right, so this is why it says exact value. Don't grab your calculator. I'm not giving you credit if you don't follow what we've been teaching you all year. So the left side here is square root of 2 over 4. The right side is square root of 6 over 4. That's fine to leave it like that, or you could combine it on, over one denominator of 4. All right, number 18. 18, uh, you should look at this as if it's a trinomial that looks like this. 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. If you can factor that, then when you're done factoring, replace it with the cosine of theta. So this factors into 2x and 2x minus 1 minus 1. Um, so the middle gives you negative 2x. The outside gives you negative 2x, which gives you your negative 4x. And the middle is what you need. All right, so it's equal to 0. So since these are the same, you're going to say 2 cosine of theta minus 1. We replaced x with the cosine. That equals 0. So now we solve. Add 1 and divide by 2. We get the cosine of theta is equal to 1 half. Well, where is the cosine of theta equal to 1 half? 1 half is the short leg. It's positive. You're in the first quadrant. So the cosine of theta 
is going to be 60 degrees. And pi over 3 is really the better way to say that. So please try to use um, all of that. Give me both if you don't, um, if you're not sure what I want. Uh, give everything. Show me. This is an exam that shows me that you know this stuff. All right, graph the polar coordinate. Six. On this graph, uh, we only have one, two, three, four, five lines. Uh, so you would have to draw another line here. Uh, and you go to 6 at negative 7 pi over 6. So where are we at negative 7 pi over 6? So 6 pi over 6 is pi. So we go all the way to negative pi. And then another pi over 6 is 30 degrees right here. So you would put your point on the 6th radial, and that's where you would end up. Number 20, graph the complex number, 5 plus 2i. So A is always your real number, B is your complex number, so A is X and B is Y. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. There's 5 plus 2i. All right, let's look at the last page. Okay, last page, uh, finding vectors uh, from coordinates. You subtract your X's and subtract your Y's. So 8 minus 3 is 5, and 9 minus 2 is 7. That's your vector coordinate, your form. Sketch the vector. You're at negative 1 and positive three. So make sure you graph it correctly. Put the arrow at the end at the point. Okay, find the magnitude of uh, number 22. So magnitude means we're gonna take the square of each value, add them together, and then take the square root. Magnitude is distance, so that's why we're doing this. And one, negative 1 squared is positive 1. 3 squared is 9. So we get the square root of 10. All right. If you want to use your calculator, you need to show me that you um, have both answers here. Okay. So the square root of 10 is 3.16 approximately. Find the dot product. Okay. So the dot product um, you have 2 and 1 for u, and 3 and negative 2 for v, so 2 times 3 plus 1 times negative 2, 6 plus negative 2 is 4. Graph um, this parabola here, so it is positive, it's y squared, so this is going to open to the right, so 4p is 1 fourth, if we divide by 4, so divide off the 4, take the top times the reciprocal of the bottom. So reciprocal of 4 is 1 fourth. You're at 1 16th. So P is 1 16th. So I'm going to make some large numbers here, distances. So this is 1. So 1 16th is going to be about right there. So P is the distance to your focal point. So the focus is going to be at uh, 1 16th, 0. And my directrix is a line. It is an invisible line. So that is vertical. So it's going through the x-axis at negative 1 16th. And our focal diameter is the actual coefficient, uh, 4p, which is 1 4th. Uh, 1 4th is about right there and right there. And you're half the distance on each side. So right here and here. So that's where your parabola is going to go through, around your focal point. Not a V. Make sure it's not a V. It's a U. There you go. Okay, number 26. This is an ellipse. So remember, ellipse is C equals A squared minus B squared. A lot of you uh, screwed up uh, ellipses and hyperbolas. The hyperbola is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's actually the Pythagorean theorem. So, um, in an ellipse, the larger number is your um, a squared. A squared is 64, so a is 8. Uh, and on the test, a lot of you uh, forgot to take the square roots, or if you're writing the equation, you forgot to square the values. Um, b is 8. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, b is 3 thinking of something while I was doing this. So B is 3. And to get C, we do this little formula here. So the square root of A squared, which we already know is 64. B squared is 9. 
Uh, 64 minus 9 is 55. Square root of 55 uh, is 7.4. So that's your C. What do we need for an ellipse? Well, you, your major axis um, distance is um, twice A. So that's going to be 16. And the minor uh, distance is 6. And this is all around uh, the origin. And since a squared is under the y, that means this is vertical. So we're going to go up to 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The other way. And 3 on the x-axis. So your, parab or your uh, ellipse looks like this. Your um, focus is right next to um, the major vertices. Okay, so your focus is at uh, 0, plus or minus 7.4. Um, your major vertices are at uh, 0, plus or minus 8. Your minor vertices are at um, plus or minus 3, 0. Now, the hyperbola number 27, the last problem, and again, before I finish, make sure you understand that this is a former test. There could be a few other things that are on your final exam. You're responsible uh, to make sure you know everything that you've been taught. Now, it's, um, you know my test. You know how I'm going to do it. I'm going to give you some simple things, uh, maybe a couple intermediate style problems. I'm not out to get you, uh, but you are responsible to be studying everything that you've been taught. Okay, um, most of the stuff that you see on this test is what you're going to see on the exam. All right, on a hyperbola, number 27, um, A squared is always first. So A is 4, and B is 6. So to get C, use the Pythagorean theorem. You get 16 plus 36 equals C squared. That's 52. And so you take the square root of 52, and we get 7.2. All right, hyperbola. You are at, um, uh, since uh, x squared is first, this is going to be a horizontal hyperbola. And a is plus or minus 4. So those are your um, vertices. And it doesn't have to be major because there's only one uh, set of vertices. So this would be plus or minus 4, 0. Your focal point, your foci, is at uh, plus or minus 7.2. So let's put our vertex on here and then go out to 5, 6, 7, 8. 5, 6, 7, 8. And put our focal point. Uh, and again, this is going to be a... Um, Focal points are only, uh, they're invisible, but that's where they are. And uh, now we need our box, A and B. So uh, A uh, is plus or minus 4, and B is plus or minus 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we draw our box. And now let's draw our asymptotes. And now we can draw our hyperbola. And that is that final exam.